right, so what's the actual difference between these formats? Well, I'll give you the real numbers and then I'll give you a more user-friendly analogy. Um, so you remember, in our waveform here, we've got 0, 100%, and negative 100% to represent where the wave goes. 8 bits can represent a number from 0 to 255. So that means that this range is split up into 255 different points where the signal can be. 16 bits gives us a number from 0 to 65,535, which means that there's a lot more range for this. 24 bits gives us 0 to uh, 16, 7, 7, 7, 2, 6, I think it's, it's no, 215, something like that. I might not be right, but the 16-ish, 16 16 16.7-ish 16 million. 32 bits, if it were integer, it would be 0 to, blah, blah, blah. but what it really is, is floating point, the way that we use it. And that's something else entirely that I'll get into. So we'll come back to that later. So what does this mean for us in a more user-friendly way? Well, 8 bits is roughly equivalent to being able to go, OK, the wave's at 0%. Now it's rising up to 1%. Oh, now it's all the way up to 3% by the next sample, and so on, using only integer whole numbers from 0 to 100 and 0 to negative 100. 16 bits is roughly the same as adding a few decimals of precision. So it can go up to 99.99% before it gets to 100.00% and so on. 24 bits is, is a lot more precision, several more decimals after that. So at 24 bits you've really got as much dynamic range as you would need for almost anything. Now here's something you may be interested in. When you have a sound recorded in PCM Digital Audio, this is how amplification works in the digital world. When you have a sound in Digital Audio, let's say, let's make this extremely simple. Let's say we have a sample. Let's, let's just imagine we have a wave like this. Okay, in the computer, this wave this tiny piece of audio, this is probably less than, this is definitely less than a millisecond. In the computer, this wave is stored more or less like this. It's a, just a list of numbers. It goes zero, then it goes to 50%, positive 50%, then zero again, then negative 50%, then zero again, then positive 50%, and then zero again. This is the actual string of numbers that would make up this wave. If we want to amplify this wave, say double the volume, add six-ish decibels, what the computer will actually do, since a computer is really a giant calculator that does millions of operations per second, it is going to multiply every one of these numbers times two, which gives us these numbers, zero plus 100 percent, zero, negative 100 percent, zero, positive 100 percent, and zero again. And that gives us a wave like this. I drew it really terribly, but that is what the wave ends up being when you amplify it. Amplifying is the exact same thing as multiplying. That is all there is to it. It's a bunch of multiplication. And this is where floating point bit depth for processing comes in. Let's say you wanted to amplify this by, instead of by two, let's say you wanted to amplify it times one and a half. Well, at our bit depth here where we've only got 0, 50, and 100, there is no place to put that. So bit depth helps when you're doing more amplification. So here's what 32-bit floating point format for numbers is.
Now the way binary numbers actually work is they're just zeros and ones. I am going to use a simplified decimal analogy. So remember we said 8 bits is roughly the equivalent of negative 100% to positive 100% integers, whole numbers. 16-bit is roughly the same as having a couple decimal points after your numbers. It gives you more fractional sections in between each whole number to register your sample. 24-bit would be like adding a whole bunch of decimals, roughly five. It doesn't exactly correspond decimal to binary in this case. Now, the, the trick with these is you have a set number of digits. So you still can't go under negative 100 or above positive 100 with, uh, because these are all fixed point. That means the decimal point, or that's always in the same spot as far as your decimals. With 32-bit floating point, the way it's stored is 24 of the bits are used to store digits. 8 bits are used to store the exponent. Don't worry, we won't get too much into the math. What this means is we've got all this many digits. However many it corresponds to. And we've got a movable decimal point. We can move this wherever. What that means is we've got all the precision of 24-bit fixed point, plus we've got a hugely flexible dynamic range. This means that in 32-bit floating point, we could theoretically store numbers up to positive, let's see, Theoretically, we could store numbers up to this much percent and the same negative. And although we no longer have decimal points over here, we can safely store this huge signal without clipping. When I first started getting into this stuff, this was my reaction. And so um, that's normal. 